We, I talk too much, yeah. The <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> so I think I talk too much. I probably talk more than that. <laughs> and so everyone's fine with the plans over the coming couple of weeks, if, for those who will be involved in that. Um, I'm happy to answer a few more questions, but we probably want to stop about seven or something like that, I think. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I'm happy to answer a few more questions and so forth. Um, yeah. A chance to talk to you, but um, just a lot of the guidance that I've been given about this time we're in Greece is that um, that there's a very special opportunity unfolding, and um, uh, my guides were saying that there's an opportunity for many of you to to grasp the vision that we have. Um, for the future because very few people actually grasp that vision at the moment um, so it's sort of like a little window in time where possibly um, some of you may be able to receive in your heart this this sort of grand vision that we have um, and what that actually looks like and feels like and means so um, I just I wanted to share that with everyone because I thought that's a lovely thing to that they've shared with me but also um, I'm aware that a number of you are mediums and even those who don't think your mediums are kind of mediums <laughs> <laughs> and um, Nina and I were chatting in the break about uh, she's been having a lot of uh, mediumship experiences as well and feeling strongly um, how um, her guides are connecting to other people's guides and helping you're all helping each other in a lot of ways already um so i haven't had a chance to talk to aj about it but i wondered about making the wednesday evenings um to have more of a mediumship focus mm -hmm. um for everyone and to sort of open just sort of open in that way more and, so how do you feel about that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we, everything that you've said today is what we've been on the yeah, list of things to do. Like everyone to come or just like... Because I don't know if I'm a medium or not, but I think I would be a really... Yeah, no, yeah. 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 We'd be open to yeah. it, but just that we focus more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nina? Yeah, and what, what, I, what I've been feeling is... Well, for me, I know when they talk, when I let them talk through me, it's amazing. I just when I hear my guys, it's just. Oh wow! It's really, really. <laughs> yeah, it's really, um, really powerful for me. Like my because I'm passionate about God. But when I feel them, and more and more I open, and more and more I receive from them, and more and more I see what how they see things, and it's kind of an ongoing soul to soul kind of things. And I feel my face is doing this, and I'm expanding and then I see more and then obviously I'm growing more and I would love if that can help because I know that's something I think but I'm not to even maybe let them talk at one stage. Definitely. <laughs> because it's when they talk they're just not leaving these guys. You just Of course. Yeah. Uh, it's really, uh, like for me when you feed them it's like wow, you know you just you want to go for it. Yeah. Like, not yep. I go and do this. Sounds good to me. And I felt when I when that's happened with some people that when I've been trying for it, they have this passion for God suddenly coming out. Yeah. So I would love to do this for all of people. Yeah, if we could do a group and then maybe they would feel them as well. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Katarina, you? I wanted to ask if we do something about uh, connecting to God. Yeah, I'd probably want to talk about that maybe in one of the weekend talks. Yeah. Just talk more about connecting God. I began a discussion a few weeks ago in Melbourne, in Australia, about um, sort of being honest and truthful about what we really feel about God. So, yeah. and I'd like to sort of grow some things on that discussion. Um, we when we talked at that discussion, we were talking about the issue of um, how to determine you know whether God exists even and whether God loves us and all of those kind of things and talk about how to determine truth and I just would like to discuss more about this aspect of getting to know God 
Yeah. yeah, and how yeah how we can get to know God. Yeah, practical in a practical way. Yeah. Um, so rather than it being all theoretical and, and and you know just all what most of the world's religions would tell you to do, um, it'll be more of a practical discussion about how we can get to know God and and get to know God's qualities and attributes, and therefore also come to love God as a result of those qualities and attributes. Would you also be able then to? Uh to tell us about that desire or, uh, or how to grow it because I felt so a while that I, if I read the prayer every day or if I do things like that every day the desire would come and it just wasn't coming no. mm -hmm. and only when I connected to myself I felt the slightest, some desire. Yeah. The slightest desire and I did have some response but yeah. Yeah. That's do, it. doing like reading and stuff it just didn't work no there are times though when it might work it's just and for every person it's very different as to what does work but uh, we can talk about I want to talk about with the whole group if we can with some microphones and everything so the whole thing's recorded um, just about how to get to know God better and also how to come to know God's attributes and qualities and start to have feelings for God you know like that that are sincere and 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 based upon your heart not, not what you think God is but but rather what you feel God is. And, um, and also how God then communicates through those feelings to you the truth about other things. Um, it's a series of discussions we'd like to do, but it'll start with this sort of aspect of getting to know God. Yeah, because yeah, we wouldn't know then if it was God communicating with us. Like, I would have no idea if whoever's communicating, even if it feels good, I would have no idea if it's God or if it's a less or if it's whoever else that is projecting that. Yep. Yep. So the key the key eventually is to, you know, feel be able to feel all those things too. The differences between mm -hmm. those things. Yeah. So that's what we'd like to do probably more on the weekends, uh, is talk more about those kind of subjects. There's another subject myself and Mary were talking about that we want to extend that we were talking about in Melbourne in Australia as well which is the subject of what the world views love to be. And the errors in the yeah, we, the we began actually. that discussion, um, but there are many, many other points we'd like to make about what the world views <coughs> as love compared to what love really is. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, we'd love to sort of extend that discussion, probably summarise the original discussion and extend it a bit as well. So we, we'll probably look at covering some of that material um, on the weekends. Yeah. Uh, but it will still be open to question and answer still. Yeah. And also we're happy to have you guys doing some mediumship on the weekends as long as, you know, it stays in harmony with love and truth, of course. So, um, so we're, I'm also happy to speak with some spirits via any of the mediums, like to speak with some spirits, whether they're in dark condition or in a bright condition, uh, via any person who's a medium. And as long as that person's willing to have that recorded because uh, it's probably going to be recorded um, so yeah that, that's probably what we finish up doing I'm happy to help you're happy to help there Nina no worries you'd, you'd like to too Nico yeah. there is a group of spirits wanting to ask about awareness you can talk about that yep yep because they don't understand what you mean by awareness soul's yep. perception yep because they, they feel that they're aware of everything but now they realise they're not yeah yep. they're intellectually aware but they're not a soul-based aware, yeah. And they don't really understand what a soul-based awareness is. Yeah. Um, Anto is a uh, medium too, really, so if we can... There's quite a number of mediums here, aren't there? There is. Half a group here, at least. Um, and the other half just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so we might as well... One thing I'd love to do is just utilise some of that uh, time with you. So, because it, there's often a really great law of attraction working when we talk with spirits who are in darkness or, or who have questions they want answered, in the sense that there's often many in a group that actually have those same kind of questions. But also, um, there's a real uh, beauty in it in the sense that many of these spirits influence us without our knowing. So that you know, one of the reasons why they come to a group such as this is they want to ask questions and everything. But 
but also because of their condition, they, they influence us as well into certain feelings and emotions. Uh, and, you know, it's really great that we can start understanding the amount of influence that we are under at times with regard to these spirits. And it's often through these interactions with the spirits that we start understanding why they surround us and what kind of interactions they're having with us and why they're having those interactions with us and so forth. Yeah. So that sound all right? So we might make that sort of our Wednesday, it might be better for Wednesday nights, uh, um, doing some of that stuff with the spirits. Okay. Sorry? Okay. Is that okay? Uh, well, we said that any time after four. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? Or how many of you would like to come but you're working and four is a bit early? Or? Yeah. So what? I'd like to come, but I can't be here until about just after six. Yeah, that's probably starting to get a bit late because then because we might want to finish by nine thirty or something like that. You're welcome to come. Then. You're welcome to come still. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And just, yeah. But you just yeah, yeah. there'll be a recording, so you'll be able to listen to the bit that is missed out. But it might be a bit late to get started by then. Um, yeah. What we find generally happens with the spirit discussions is that they get quite involved and. Um, and before you know it, like four or five hours has passed, and you know it's like if you put a and if you put a break in between, you know, where everyone has to have a chat as well. You, you often, you know, five to ten o'clock, and you feel like it just has gone like that, you know. But I'm also happy to do one of the weekends like that as well, um, if you feel up to it in front of eighty or ninety people, because I think that's about how many people there will be. Maybe not the second weekend, but the first one certainly. Yeah, maybe the second weekend might be a good choice for doing some more of it if we have the opportunity. Yeah. And some more questions and answers, possibilities? I would like to ask certainly. about her changes in Europe. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one. You're the only one. How many else wants to ask that question? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm perfectly happy to answer some of those questions. And in fact, we could involve this interaction with spirits in terms of this process as well. Um, that would be a very interesting process, actually, to involve some of the spirit interactions with the answer to those questions. So uh, that might be a good opportunity over the coming weeks as well to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask the general question to all the mediums at the <coughs> moment? Just if you feel about Greece, what's your feelings about earth changes? <laughs> well, what I wanted to put to you as a group is that you are quite closed to knowing the truth about earth changes in Europe. There's a very strong feeling of not really wanting to know. Because there won't be any case. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you feel? Because... Uh, you know there will be severe some severe events here of course, in Europe, and um, and yeah, I feel quite a lot of you would like to believe that that's not going to be the case, and um, and quite a lot of you are quite <coughs> attached to your lives as you currently know it to be, and uh, as a result of that, are quite resistive to knowing about any <coughs> possible future adjustments to your life that you're going to need to make. And so the question of earth changes um, is going to raise a lot of those emotions for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you can have a feel over the coming week about your resistance to knowing the truth about changes, that would help immensely. Even if we're channeling as a group, if the majority of the group don't believe what's being channeled is actually anywhere near any having any accuracy, then that actually makes the accuracy of the channeling even worse. Does that make sense? So unless we're open to all sorts of possibilities and we're not emotionally closed, it's going to be very hard for spirits 
and particularly for celestial spirits to transmit truth to us about earth change events or anything for that matter not just earth change events but but in the case of earth change events there is quite a lot of resistance in the group in Europe about knowing what is actually going to happen but there is less resistance to the people in the USA <laughs> in the USA Michael nobody wants to know what's going to happen pretty much AJ yeah I don't like what is going to come you, but concerning their changes. You don't like it? No. And, and I don't... And Nico, do you I want me to do something about it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I felt the put in a good word with God. Go on, sorry. I feel the beauty of it. You know, I felt a little bit the plan thing. Yeah. I still have emotions that I, a part of me doesn't agree. Yeah. Although I know we are responsible, but I'm expecting God to say that. You know? Yeah, it's a very uh, good uh, thing to say, actually, Nico, that many of us do expect <coughs> God to actually miraculously, come, you know. miraculously come to our rescue, mm. should I say. Mm. And, um, and the reality is that God's laws, and this is why it's really important to understand many of God's laws, but... One of God's primary laws, as you know, is the law of, you know, what you sow, you reap. And your problem with many of us in the human race is that, um, and we, we see this in action on a day-to-day -day basis with mankind's laws, we break mankind's laws quite regularly, but then when we get caught doing it, we don't want to pay the penalty. Does that make sense? So in other words... We're, we're willing to speed, but when a policeman pulls us over and books us for speeding and fines us, we complain about the fine. But we were okay breaking the law. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Now, this same thing applies to our relationship with God a lot, in that we're okay breaking God's law, and then we almost expect God to do the same with us as what men do with us, and that is say, oh, okay, you have broken out my law, but that's all right. I'll let you get away with it this one time. Mm -hmm. And one thing we don't realise about God's nature is that God is never going to let us get away with anything. We don't realise that. And so what we do is we expect God to let us get away with things. We expect God to let us get away with things individually, but we also expect God to let us get away with things collectively. And one of the things that we need to come to terms with, and this earth change question is one of those things, is that we need to come to terms with the fact that actually, no, we are going to reap what we have sown. You know, the average person doesn't plant a wheat seed and expect a mango tree to grow, do they? Not really. Have you ever done that? Expected a mango tree to grow from a wheat seed? No. And yet when it comes to what we do in our lives, we often expect a mango from a wheat or, or from a weed, you know, we often expect there to be good results from our sowing negative things. And the reality is that uh, God has God's laws in place so firmly that that it is impossible for God to change those laws for us individually or collectively. And, and as a result of that, that means that we are going to have to, as a human race, pay the penalties of our own sowing, of our own Action. actions that we have perpetrated upon this planet. Has this happened before? And it's happened before. Yes, it has happened before for the same reasons that mankind has done the same things. And, and what we need to do is come to terms with the fact that every time we act and feel unloving things, we are creating unloving results every single time. And many times those unloving results are going to have a direct impact upon our own life as a result of our unloving actions. And there is so many times, you know, that we try to avoid that, that we, we expect 
to be able to do the unloving thing without paying the unloving the, the price for the unloving thing. That's what we expect. And so if we can deal with that emotionally, then we realize that no, everything that happens will be happening to correct this unlovingness that exists in the planet today. All of us would admit, yes, that, that the planet is in a very unloving condition. But when it comes to our own involvement in that, we often have a lot less uh, desire to acknowledge our own involvement in the unloving conditions. So if I said to you, for example, that our desire to break the law and get away with it is actually one of the reasons why the world is in an unloving condition, many of you would be quite perhaps surprised about that. But you think then about your personal desire, how many times do you personally desire to break the law and get away with it? Do you see? So if we have that desire in us, can we see that that desire is going to be also acted out towards God's creation? We're going to break the laws of God and expect to get away with it as well. And of course we're not going to, but we do expect it. And this is sometimes why we're sad, Nico, about what's going to happen in the future, thinking that, well, it shouldn't happen, you know, I wasn't involved in this, but to be frank, Many of us have been severely involved, myself included, in the creation of unloving things on this planet. Right? Like we we were just talking again yesterday. We talk about a lot in the day, myself and Mary. But we we're talking again yesterday about talking about the hamburgers. About the hamburgers. Yeah. yeah. We when we flew from Amsterdam to Greece, um, we had an interesting law of attraction on the plane in that. Um, Two out of three flights, we didn't get a meal because um, we request, you know, yeah. ve- or the guys who booked the ticket requested vegetarian for us. But on the on the European flight, um, I was I remarked to AJ that every single person on the on the plane had a hamburger with cheese. That I had a cheeseburger, and I, and I was saying to him like, imagine how many cows died for that one flight, and and then I was. Saying, imagine how many forests yes. were cut down to, you know, feed those cows, grow the grain to feed the cows and to graze the cows, um, and that was just one flight. That was mm. like four hours in the lot, and it was. It just struck me because on mass, it was like beef. There was cheese. no other meal. Yeah, no. it was yeah. Beef, beef. And every beef single beef. person apart from us two, pretty much had that uh, meal. Yeah. 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 So, so like. You know, we often don't reflect upon how our day-to-day actions create long-term damage to the planet we're living on. Even the fact of, to save money, taking an extra flight. So it's probably more expensive to fly directly from Singapore to Athens. But how many people saved money and took an indirect route and actually the fuel in the planes the, the extra flights that go everywhere, that has a massive impact on our environment. The, the, I mean, jet fuel in itself is, is a massive, but um, mm. the, the way we're willing to compromise for the sake of money. saving our own money and the impact that that has on the planet. Yeah. So, so if you were concerned about the environment with the booking of a flight here, then, then the most direct route would actually have the least impact on the environment. Would it not? Mm-hmm. But the most direct route costs more money. Mm-hmm. You see? So even our injuries about money and then, uh, you know, affect it. So in the case of ourselves, the flight that was booked for us, which we didn't book, but um, it was... For which we have an amazing amount of gratitude. We do have an amazing amount of gratitude for it. But we also reflect upon how it was chosen mm-hmm. in the sense that it was chosen and we had to go to Amsterdam to get to here. And if you think about it, that was six hours extra we had to fly to get to here. That's six hours of petrol by two people. Does, does it make sense? Six mm-hmm. hours of time. All of those things are not factored in, you see. And why don't they factored in? Because of our fears about money or other things. That's why they're not factored in. We're not thinking about everything. 
and, and this is something we do constantly on a day-to-day -day basis we constantly do these things and the further that I progress the more I realize that every single like really realize that every single issue in my soul that's not in harmony with love right now not only affects me and what I attract into my life but it affects every single person around me in ways that I I don't even understand but there's many obvious ways but just that one issue about lack of abundance can cause us to cause heaps of damage to he people around us in like simple and very complex ways as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. yeah I'm, uh, I'm still with the earth changes and connecting to what you said now about our love and I just when I heard the one on the talks on YouTube where you described uh, the galaxy and the black hole and the, the love that comes out of it, mm -hmm. which actually uh, scared me, uh, then... Why did it scare you? It, it's love, either. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. 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 And, but that's... Uh, so yeah, the, the idea was, uh, no, that uh, when we are in this dark place of not too much love, yeah. and love increases, kind of... The, There's a gap between the, those the gap two states. increases, yep. so the pain gets worse. That's what That's scared correct. me. That's what scared me. Yeah. Uh, but my question in all this was, how, and it, maybe in this is the answer. So I'm sorry if I'm making a mess out of this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Misses um, are allowed. <laughs> how how can uh, the the not uh, that we are in such a dark space on Earth create pole shifts, uh, new continents rising? all the earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff. That's well, they, well, they don't necessarily create all of those things because some of these things are actually galactic cycles that occur on a periodic basis. However, they do create the massive human loss and the massive loss of, uh, of life, uh, of other life on the planet. Because if we knew, if we know the truth about what's going to yeah. happen and we were sensitive to these truths of what was going to happen, very, very. We we can do so much to prepare that that, that mm -hmm. I, we could do so much that not even one person's life would be lost, mm -hmm. let alone millions or billions of people. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, it would still have a very positive effect on the earth if we if we were totally in tune with what was going on from an emotional perspective. So it's just right now everything is happening at the same time. Yes, and but it's interesting the the way God. Uh, you could say the way God develops us or evolves us as a human race is by, by increasing the intensity of these waves of love coming from the universe, which increases the potential of our own, it even increases the potential of our own genetic structure, let alone our own capacity emotionally and, and in other ways. And as a result of that, our capacity to grow or change into a new type of being instantly is available. And so this is why if you look at the evolutionary cycle on the planet, you will see that the, the evolutionary cycle went for a certain period of time in, with certain periods, of, with certain types of uh, creations. Yeah. For, for example, like w it went for a long period of time with, o with only like basically trees and insects. And then all of a sudden we get records, fossil record of, you know, of animals that now start that now have a backbone in the central nervous system now the the potential the, the these waves of love coming through the universe through through this increasing potential created this genetic mutations that then stabilized and then continued does it make sense it's a, it's one of the means in which god's god creates things in the universe but the, of course his pinnacle of creation which is not our body or our spirit body but rather the human soul also is greatly affected by these waves of love coming through it and its potentiality. And as a result of that, uh, yeah, there are huge changes that can come and, and that are possible in terms of mankind's evolvement that uh, would not be possible without those, the waves of love entering the universe. Makes sense that God would send a messenger to help with everyone's soul at a time yeah, where he was yeah. done. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. One messenger and two, first. Or even four, two. 
Exactly, exactly. And in fact, this is something that's being replicated on other planets in the universe um, in the same manner. Um, so but there's 14 messengers, as people are saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a group of messengers at each. So in the first case, there was one messenger like thousands of years ago who, who arrived on each one of these planets due to these waves of love potential, raising of potential. And then, and then due to the development of those through the dimensional spheres surrounding those particular planets, when, when they reincarnate, if I can use that term very loosely, when they came back to the Earth and their second visit, it's a group of people who have come to that condition who then can help the whole thing change. And that's happening on, on many, many planets, not just on our planet on Earth. The same creator region. Sorry? The same creator. Mm. Yes, yeah, same creator. And also these are all happening at the same time because mm. the waves of love appear at the same time. Mm. And that's why the potential in each, in each, you can think of it in each part of the physical universe, the potential in each part of the physical universe has been relatively identical. So there are actually no advanced civilizations that are more advanced than ours in the physical. Did, we, did they all go through these dark times and yep. unloving states in yeah. a similar manner? Yeah, in a similar manner. Wow. So similar soul ingredients? Similar, yeah, similar uh, um, desires that, that, that were acted out upon, uh, upon I mean, their the soul, is it the same as our soul? Same type. It's a human soul, exactly the oh. same, yeah. Do we, do we, are we going to meet them in the spirit world one day? Yes. Or oh, do they have a separate place also there? We won't see them. Do they look? Okay. No, sort of no, it's <laughs> completely separate until you hit the soul union state. Oh. So when you're in the soul union state. No way to go. <laughs> it might be quicker than you think. So, I've met <laughs> so myself and Mary have met the Jesus and Mary of the other planets. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. Does our mythology refers to some gods, <coughs> especially Greek mythology? About Is some it gods? spirit influence, some ancient gods, or some ancient no. entities that maybe came to planet? Is yeah. it true or is it spirit influence? Um, well, it's true, but not in the way that mankind thinks it's true. And there's these, if I can give you a bit of background about the mythology and also probably primarily about the records of the mythology because there are physical records about these things. What was the question? Um, there are records on the planet and that, that there were an advanced civilization of people who knew things mathematically that we are yet to discover collectively on this planet at the moment and yet and yet they, these truths have been present on the planet in the past. And, and, so, and the question referred to Greek gods? In particular. Um, now, m most of the Greek gods are actually just people who lived on Earth, um, who passed into the spirit world, and who eventually raised to themselves to a condition of the sixth dimension, sixth. and then talked and know. influenced people back on Earth again. Of course, much of the mythology was when they were in a much lower condition before they got to the sixth dimension. So, you know, the spirits passed over into the spirit world, had quite a powerful presence when they're on earth, so they had quite powerful links when they're in the spirit world. And when they're in the, fir in the hells even, they did a lot of damaging things, which then became a part of the mythology. Yep. So there were only six spheres until your first coming. Yep. So? Yep. So eventually they reached the sixth dimension, uh, the sixth sphere. And, uh, and then as they, um, they obviously had a much more positive influence on the Earth once they reached the sixth dimension, but before they reached the sixth dimension, they had quite a negative effect on, on the Earth and quite a negative effect on a lot of religion on the Earth as well, in the sense of the religious belief systems that were encouraged. So, and the Greek religious system and Roman religious system that were, you know, I'm talking now three to 5,000 years ago, um, many of those systems were based upon this mythology of these passing spirits who had passed many, many thousands of years prior and who had exacted a lot of damage as a result of their passing after with their passing onto the earth and then, and then of course they grew into and a much good influence in art and in, uh, in drama and theater. Every area you can think of, yeah. Every. From sixth sphere. Yeah, and down, from sixth sphere down, yeah.
What? I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like in Greece uh, regarding the mythology and the culture? Um, I know there's a strong Catholic. Um, no, well, Greek no, also, uh, a Greek also, uh, uh, the same. So I'm sorry. Language. Yeah. Um, um, but what is the you know in the culture of the society, the mythology? How is it regarded now? Is, is it fairy tale? It's not as a fairy tale. Yeah. A, as a fairy tale. As a part of history. But they believe yeah. uh, they have a strong belief in God, but in an orthodox manner. Yeah. yeah. The distorted uh, way yeah. Yeah. from the churches, but they still believe very much. They believe, and they were the first people in Europe that they believed. Um, uh, very hard world. in one God, in the Trinity they believe, mm -hmm. that it's the same uh, the Father, God and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Actually the Trinity was later on, after it was imposed by uh, committees yep. that they formed the Bible and the stuff. Yeah, yeah, Before that it was like a movement yep. and they wanted to establish that movement as a religion so in order to control right. and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So before then, um, do you still have much influence here with the old mythology, like prior, prior Christianity. Is Sorry. there many people interested in that? Well, yes, they are. Uh, no, yes. Yeah. 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 But they're really passionate about it. Yeah. The people who are, are yeah. passionate they're about it. They're graphic. They're considered yeah. to be very graphic. Yeah. 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 Going to the, uh, the Olympus Mountain and uh, having pagan uh, <coughs> stuff. Yeah. 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 But they can believe in all this. Uh, that, uh, they investigate more than the religious people. Of course. So yes. they can understand easier all this multidimensional dimensional universe, yep. in my opinion. Yeah, and, and I feel they, they have received more a lot of channeled information from exactly. forebears yeah. that have been passed down yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. In terms of, can I answer the a second part of the question that you probably didn't realise would be a part of this answer, but I'll answer it anyway. Um, the reality is that on the planet, um, there was a time when there were spirits who came from the spirit world in a fairly poor condition, who materialised on the planet. And they actually had sex with women on Earth. They were mostly males, and they had sex with women on Earth, and they had progeny. And the progeny were children. children. They had children. And uh, the children were like, um, they, they were... Well, that's what they were basically treated as. They were treated as sort of gods. Yeah. They they were around 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, giants. The giants, we call it. In so they, giants. they were giants. Yeah. Um, and the Egyptians talk about these people as well, don't and they? they refer, many of the old cultures refer to them as the sun gods. Oh. Sun gods, yeah. 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 Who, who, who many people nowadays believe came from outer space. Or something. Yeah, that's the book But the actually, ones. they were the children of... Yeah materialized spirits. Um, the problem is the children were, uh, what's the word? Uh, I'm looking for sterile. Where you can't have children. Yes, sterile. Sterile, yeah. yeah. And so of course, um, but also this, this event actually occurred shortly before some major earth changes on the earth. Um, and, uh, and so some of the records are actually sunken in the sea, but there are records in all of the larger pyramids, and in fact the Great Pyramid, uh, and stuff like that also refers to not the Great Pyramid itself, but there are there are temples in Egypt that are buried under huge amounts of silt that, that have now been that that were you know over the last hundred years or so uncovered, and they have records of all of this kind of uh, mythology, if you like. That's what it's classified as. Um, as do the Aztecs and, and uh, other older civilizations, the Mayans and so forth, right? And um, and these uh, and in fact, the Bible itself contains a record of this. Um, it refers to a group of people. The Bible refers to as the Nephilim, yeah. uh, just before the time and the flood of Noah's day, and uh, and it's all referring to the same thing. And these children, these children, yeah. And these children were so violent uh, as well. <laughs> it created the degradation of the condition on the planet to such a point that the spirits themselves couldn't maintain their physical form anymore and they dematerialised. So the, the, the parents of the children dematerialised just before the earth change events occurred. Like Titans, something like that? So that, well, they returned back to the spirit world, so they're now still in the spirit world. 
how could uh, the poor condition, experience in poor condition, be materialized? And, uh, by the material, by the condition of the Earth raising to a point, to around the second sphere, actually. Um, if the condition of the Earth was in the second sphere um, at the moment, you would have material spirits who are in that in that sphere, able to materialize bodies. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. No, but I've heard that. <laughs> 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 I don't get that. Can it happen again? Could it happen again? Well, the, uh, I mean, yeah. if we raise eventually the condition on Earth, and before we merge with our partners, mm -hmm. we can visit Earth again with physical bodies. I mean, you mean if you're in the spirit world? I mean, the spirit world I uh, stayed in the sixth sphere, for example. Let's say I'm not one with God yet. At the moment, pretty much any body above a fourth sphere condition can materialize, okay. but they can only materialize under certain conditions, and the conditions that have been imposed by God, basically through the laws that are involved, uh, were are that you can't do it for personal reasons. So, in other words, you can materialize but for reasons that are beyond, that are loving, that are love-based reasons, you know, pure, from a pure perspective. And this is, this is the thing that we were talking about, about the conditions being different then, wasn't it? In the, yeah, in the, um, the conditions in, way back in this time when these other spirits materialised, where they, there, there was an initial materialisation of spirits who, who were in the condition where they were being loving, but, but because they could do it, they, their, their, their doing of it created the ability in the others who weren't in this loving condition to do it, be able to do it at the same time. Um, so ba basically, it's a bit like if I go and create a nuclear fusion bomb, and I was doing it for some loving purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say, let's say it was for the like, let's say I was doing nuclear fusion for the well, fission for the purpose of producing power, for example. And then, because I now have that technology, mankind, if they are in a poor condition, can then use it negatively, can't they? Mm -hmm. So, so this is the problem with every new dis discovery we make. The people in the poorest condition at the moment are the people who determine the the use of the discovery to a large degree. So, for example, the first aeroplane flew around about 100 years or so ago, right? Powered a powered aeroplane. Um, in terms of our modern history, um, within a few years, what were they using it for? Bomb. For dropping bombs in the in the First World War, yeah. Now, it wasn't until the late 30s, or usually about that time, where man started to use it for more loving means, which was for transportation of people between continents. And then, you know, obviously by now, now we're using more aeroplanes for loving means, in the sense of for, for more, it's more for communication and transportation and all those kind of things, what you would classify as more loving means than what we use it for in terms of unloving means. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot more planes now. You built for domestic purposes, shall I say, than there is for war. But uh, but you know, hundred you know, hundred years ago, that wasn't the case. And this is the problem with every new discovery. While we are in a condition that lacks love, every new discovery that is made is usually often used in a, in its most negative form first. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you think. In the Second World War, we learnt a lot about nuclear fission, fusion and fission, uh, so much so that we could create an atomic bomb, which was then dropped upon people in Japan, right? And, and yet, it wasn't until many years later that we used the first, uh, that, that same technology for the production of power, so what was which is a more loving me. What was the purpose for those uh, loving uh, spirits to materialize? That uh, era. They brought a lot of math, <coughs> like uh, technology. Ah, they brought the uh, technology. Okay. Mathematics. Yeah. Right. Mathematics. Right. Yeah. The evolution of mankind is a combination of what happens on Earth and what happens in the spirit world. It's not. It's not just what happens on Earth. That's what we want. So, you know, in the future, the question you were asking was more about future. You go and, and yeah, in the future you will see many spirits materialise 
on the earth, and many of them will come and have chats with you. Yeah. <laughs> and when you say you know, can you elucidate? Can you explain? Uh, you said you know. Well, I know that I will have chats with. He was playing poker uh, with somebody else. <laughs> 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 you know, the thing is, uh, when I was very young, I saw this dream of the destruction of the earth. And at that time, I didn't understand the whole of it, and I stayed in fear. Yeah. And as I had to progress through my emotional conditioning, I found out it triggered another emotion of closing the gates of heaven, you know, of course. And at that moment, I, I felt the, the only thing that it was so perfect, I don't know why, and so strong in me, in that dream, was I am safe, I'm powerful, and I feel so much hurt for the changes and the damage will happen to the world. And the question that I always was asking was, why so many have to die? And well, I, to want to have the desire to help them, but just looking, you know, because you cannot do anything. The reality is that nobody has to die. So that's even reality. in this state right now, we are in, the, in this state right now. Even yeah, nobody has to die, but the reality is that uh, that many will because of the choices we make. And hey, you guys don't even want to know what's going to happen in your country. <laughs> so how are you going to look after you? I know no, they are to do that. I don't like it. <laughs> I like to have warm water, I, want, I know how to survive, but without this fallout from the volcanoes and stuff, it's going to be really hard, and I don't like it that way. <laughs> well, that, that's the emotion of wanting comfort, isn't it? So, yeah. Wanting a comfortable life, yeah. yeah. I would like to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know you would like yeah. I want to create something new. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of positive, once you know the truth about it, there's a lot of positive things you can do now to sort through the issue easily. But but it also means dealing with quite a lot of emotions, doesn't it? Yeah. Because some of the emotions are things like, um, you know, even, even our desire for comfort is going to get triggered. So, our desire to be able to travel wherever we want, you know, we're so used these days to, you know, travelling at, at at a whim, you know, and it's going to be hard to travel at a whim. So, there's all these kind of emotions that we need to work our way through. But we'd we'd love to address the issues of what will happen as change wise for Europe. Yeah. yeah. I would like to ask another question. No. Can I just see who had their hands up first? Oh, Eagle. 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 I'd like to ask, Patrick's had her hand up for some time, so can I ask uh, Patrick first? I wanted to ask about the, the children between the spirit, materialized spirits and the people on Earth. Yes. Do they have human souls, like our souls, or are they... Yes, they did. They did? Yeah. Uh, remember the spirit men had souls as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so they still had, they had a human they soul. Had a human soul. Yep. But because of their physical form, they exercised their soul in a very damaging way. And so now are in very dark condition. And still are in a very dark condition, even though this happened like nearly 13,000 years ago. Yeah. It's not about, it's a different topic. Uh, is so, there anything on yeah, the same exactly. topic? <laughs> yes. Uh, Marina. 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 Um, because of what you were saying before about how Greeks feel about mythology, yeah. Um, yeah. I have a lot of unworthiness, but I feel like my mediumship is opening up a lot towards this, especially these days and these weeks. Yeah. And um, I said something that I feel very strongly. The reason why a lot of Greeks, uh, all of us as a group, I don't think there's one person that isn't a medium. Yeah. Yeah. We all in some way have said like a piece of info, like, just yeah. like what did you just say? Yeah. You know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I feel one of the reasons why it's so strongly is also based from damage point of view, where Greeks really wanted to keep in touch with their ancestors somehow. Yes. And yeah. because they also knew about like, I get these images of Pythagorean and all, all of these yeah. theories, they knew that the mixture of 
art and science was really, really important. Yep. And that's why we feel like we have this kind of more open than, I guess, if you were to compare. Yep. But um, also, um, when you also asked about, does anybody have an image about what would happen to Greece? I have an image of a map. And if you want, I can say it out loud now, or if you'd sure. like to wait. Um, I, I had a feeling that it was like, it would become a much smaller peninsula. Mm -hmm. but one side, like a new island would be formed from what would be west mm -hmm. of Greece, mm -hmm. and then the rest would be just like like the middle to the top, something like this, like mm -hmm. northern, but, mm -hmm. but west would remain, and then like a little thing of east, and that was it. And I just wanted to say that. Yeah. And but the issue we but face. I don't know, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But the the issue we face with earth changes isn't just what the underlying topology is going to be afterwards. What we've got to do is we've got to look at what's going to happen during, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that's going to depend. Our survival very much is going to depend upon. Does that make sense? So, so even though you may end up with uh, land masses still being around your region, the issue is going to be how habitable everything is after that point, and what will happen in between. And that's why it's so important to ask a lot more detailed questions than just what is things going to look like at the end. You know. If you ask the question, I got a picture and I said, sure, um, yeah, sure. I still a lot of work though. Yeah. But I wanted to say this this piece of the mediumship is really important and I really feel that um, a lot of my ancestors and a lot of Greeks are like, you see, they were real. They really did come and they really did do this. But they also feel cheated because they felt that they were in much higher conditions than what they really were. Yes. Like, what are you saying? You know? That's they true. feel like, like, it took so long to come back and do this. They felt, they feel like, yeah, and this is the trouble too with error is that when we hear error over and over and over and over again, when we hear the truth, we feel cheated. <laughs> you know, we feel like it's unjust, but the reality is it's the error over and over and over again that's the injustice, and that's the thing that's damaging. But, but often it's the hearing of the truth that causes us to be angry rather than the actual fact that you know, we've been told the error for years and years and years. The other thing I've noticed about Greece is that um, even though you've had a very heavy Christian influence, there's one part of the Christian influence that's had very little effect on you in terms of, uh, and, and there's effect, affected your mediumship. And that is that uh, in the Bible it states very, quite categorically in some purposes, parts of the Hebrew scriptures, that if you're a medium, that you should be put to death. And. Uh, and, and that definitely didn't stick here. Did, yeah, it definitely uh, didn't stick in Greece. And as a result of that, um, there is this acceptance almost, even in the Greek Orthodox religion, of prophecy, if you like, or spirit-induced spirit discussions. Vision. And there is an understanding of bright spirits or, or spirits who are loving compared to spirits that are unloving. We have the monasteries back on the north, you know, one, uh, some, I don't know the word, um, North of Salonica, yep. it's a community of uh, heavy Orthodox Mount Athos, yep. where they have uh, very good communication with spirits. Yeah. 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 And this is the thing where in, in, your, in your culture it's fairly much accepted, even though it's a Christian culture pretty much now, it's pretty much ex still accepted that spirit communication is okay. <laughs> and in fact, it's not only just okay, but it's also quite acceptable. Whereas in many of the other Christian cultures, it's been so unacceptable that you'd be burned alive for speaking to a spirit, you know. And in particularly most of the Catholic influence cultures, that's very much the case where, you know, they would have been burned alive as a witch if you were found speaking uh, with spirits. Yeah. I've, I've always been fascinated by other cultures and I just, like, in the end I feel um, everyone has a unique personality and it's often a mix of um, dominant injuries and dominant... Uh, openness to truth in selected areas that create a culture, you know, and then everyone lives together in that and it kind of gets developed. But because uh, I used to think, no, culture is is like a pure thing that everyone should be different and now I kind of have a different view. But I just find it so beautiful traveling and, and feeling the purity of, of like, you know, you guys as mediums and spirit interaction, it's so much more open than Australia even and we're not even Christian culture really we're, we're the least religious nation on earth like <laughs> statistically um, but uh, I just find it really beautiful the diff and it just like I have lots of visions about how people of different cultures of the world can actually help heal the injuries 
in the other cultures, you know, because every culture carries injury and um, but every culture has a certain openness to aspects of different yeah. truth and it's just so beautiful to me that um, I love the blending of cultures and that, you know, there's so many nationalities in the room and I just think that's really beautiful. It's like a national lab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If we're done on Earth changes. <laughs> Are we done on Earth changes? <laughs> For the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we get back to that. Now, my question concerns religion, actually. Yep. And something I've discovered for myself, just actually yesterday evening when I was speaking with Nina, but I realized it then, but then I grew back and saw back in time that when it, it had occurred always, actually, I'm, I would say, ah, religious. I'm anti, I mean, I'm totally not religious. I've quit church in Germany, like I was Catholic, baptized, let's say. Um, my parents weren't very religious, my, even my grandparents weren't very religious. But whenever I hear or see something religious, like the Bible, I never read the Bible, I was never interested in a religion. Yesterday we spoke about religion, it, I, I, afterwards I was exhausted, I was drained. Um, I'm reading like, uh, I'm reading the life of Lysian right now. There is one chapter where he says, where he talks about religion. I, oh my God, I have to drag myself through the pages. Mm -hmm. There is something in me, and I don't really, I really don't know what it is, that the religion does to me, although I actually grew up without religion, even without parental religious influence, really. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, like, what that is. Is that spirit influence? I don't know. I don't know under what insta influence I am there. Like, why is that so... What what does what can this topic religion do to me? Whereas I believe I'm actually not religious at all. Mm. What does it do to most people? Even that's a, that's the effect it has on many people. The same effect. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon it might be the case? I don't know. Maybe just the resistance of what religion did people. For me, it's like a big institution, a powerful institution, and I totally don't go go along with what they say. So, so when you say you're not influenced by religion, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be more specific to say that actually you believe religion's done a lot of damaging things on the yes. planet, mm -hmm. and that you feel quite negative towards religion yes, as a result? True. Yes. Now, can you see that because of the negative feelings you have towards religion as a result, that that's also going to attract a lot of spirits who also feel quite negative towards religion? Can you see that? Probably. So, so every time religion is discussed, yeah. what's going to finish up happening, do you think? There's going to be a mixture of your emotion about religion mixed with inviting in the all spirits' emotions about religion. Right. And what, what's going to be the result of that? It's going to be almost like an, an anger about what religion's done and a dark feeling about what religion has done and resistance to discussing <coughs> religion Well, at itself. least resistance, that was, uh, that's what I feel. I don't even get that far to feel anger towards yeah. it. I mm -hmm. just feel like I can't, you know, I, I totally like, want to detach from this. But, but every time we want to detach, and this is something I said, you can say, because no. you were going to say the same thing as me. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. interesting yesterday yeah. is like we were talking and as soon as I, my attention, what I find is wonderful when we can connect to people from different religion and belief and feel about what they feel and mm -hmm. how, because I've been contact, in contact with people from different backgrounds and mm -hmm. it's fascinating because I, we can help them to see how it's not logical. Definitely. And then that's why as soon as I say that, <laughs> but if we, is, yeah. and, and if we so have a shut down feeling towards religion, can you see straight away we're almost condemning all the people in those religions? Because if we're in a space of love towards religion, we'd be open to it. We might not agree, but we, we could discuss it, we yeah. could you know, be open to engaging with people from religion. Yeah, and, and so what we were going to say was every time there is a shutdown, or you find yourself going, there's there's definitely something there, and, and I For feel you. there's yeah, I know that that's yeah. what Huge I just emotion. figured yeah. out yesterday that um, there must yeah. be something, mm -hmm. yeah, that I never realised until yesterday. But and and I think it's quite big, Nicole. Yeah, mm. yeah. and I think there's anger on top. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was uh, wanted really to ask because I could feel it's like wow. Mm. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about the feelings. Did you? Where did you grow up in, in Germany? Germany? No, actually, I grew up in Egypt. 
Ah, uh, okay, right. What about Germany? Yeah, I was just wondering about the the feelings in Germany about religion. Well, more the feelings in your parents about yeah. religion. What are those feelings? Similar. Nothing to do, obviously, in life with church, and because I grew up like somewhere else than Germany, um, I was like, like my life was completely free of church. Basically, I was completely free of religion, of any religious education. But it's, it's let's more say. The, the feelings. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, yeah. You, you weren't actually completely free of religion. What, what actually, how you grew up was that your parents had quite an anti-religious stance, yeah. and so therefore you had a religion. And the religion was anti-religion. Right. <laughs> you yeah. follow me? Yeah. It's a bit like a, a, a group of people, a, a person growing up in an atheist home. So will have a person, a, a, a children growing up in a home of atheists, ah, yeah. which is no belief, no in, God. belief in God. Yeah. Um, would naturally, you would think, grow towards having no belief in God. Yeah. So they grew up in a religion. Yeah. And the religion so the belief was system. whatever you title it, untitled it, but that there is no God. Yeah. And you grew up in a belief system that there should be no religion. Religion is bad and religion is bad, and controlling, and damaging. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we don't want to be involved in it. That's the that's the belief system you grew up in. And so whenever religion is mentioned, there's not an openness straight away as a result of that. Does that make sense? So we, we must remember that we all grew up in a religion yeah. and the actual religion that we grew up in was the religion of the family. Yeah. And what I mean by the religion of the family is the family's dominant characteristics, dominant belief systems and so forth all got imposed upon us and that became our religion. So if they happened to be a religion like a Catholic then there's high likelihood we would have had to have accepted yeah. the Catholic religion. If they happen to be a religion like atheists, atheism, or a religion like, you know, Muslim, or a religion that is no religion, mm -hmm. then that's what we will become probably as well. And, and so in, a, in, in effect, um, to actually become completely open emotionally to all forms of belief systems and be able to analyse them with, with no uh, emotional impact, on us, to do that would require that we actually um, got rid of all of our emotional injuries about the religion in which we grew up with, which actually is not the religion of the church, but rather yeah. the religion of the family. Whatever the family said yeah. became our religion. And unless we're willing to release the emotions associated with the family, we will never have a mo a, a, an emotional openness towards other groups of people. So, so, so if I grew up in a family of Christians who at the time, so in the Dark Ages, were attacking Muslims in, yes. the, in Israel, right, then I would grow up thinking that I have the right to kill Muslims mm. because of their religion. And I'd believe that to be true, even though it's obviously, when we look at it from a completely open-minded perspective and, and particularly from an open-hearted perspective, we would see that... Actually, that would be a very unloving thing, unloving thing to do, to murder another person for the sake of any belief. So <coughs> we need to realise the, the powerful effect that these emotions when we were growing up that our parents had towards all sorts of belief systems had a, as an effect on us. I just realised now when you were speaking that um, I think this resistance towards religion even causes now my resistance towards God. And I just mentioned earlier while we were eating something to yep. someone for the first time that I've, because I'm facing huge resistance difficulties now, I'm really desiring God lately, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and I just for the first time, just half an hour ago, I said that I always felt like it's ridiculous, it's stupid, you know, to just focus on God. Which of course makes sense now to me if I see that religion for me is a thing to, to avoid. Yeah, exactly. And, and God yeah. goes with religion. Exactly. Yeah. And this is something we've got to do: is is dis divorce God from religion. Yeah. Well, in my <laughs> mind, know? and Jesus, I thought it is. It. Actually, but <laughs> I always had this. Who? Yeah, Jesus. I don't know. I never. Yeah, you need to divorce Jesus from Christianity as well, because <laughs> yeah. you know, like, the two. Yeah. Honestly, in our own hearts, we often associate these things together, yeah. and that prevents us from being open 
towards a true conception of God, a true conception of, of our soul, a true conception of the world even. And, and it's always these hidden, the, these childhood things that we grew up with that causes the blockages to the truth about all of these concepts. Yeah. So there was obviously quite a lot of emotion in this for you. Yeah. And it's related to a very young period of your life. Um, and pretty much all of our belief systems we gathered into our soul before we were seven years of age. So, so pretty much all of these belief systems that we have any resistances towards, any races we have resistance <coughs> towards, any gender we have resistance towards, is all related to the time period before we were seven years of age most of the time. So that could be actually because I grew up in, in Cairo until I was eight, and then I went to Germany. So. Maybe there was even a clash, like in growing up in a Muslim country, together with this Christian, anti-Christian heritage from my parents. Like well, your, your parents were really anti-religious, yeah. not not just anti-Christian. No, yeah. Mm. Mm. Because they don't they don't agree with the Muslim faith just as much as they don't agree with the with the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've uh, written a question some time ago. Uh, God, God wanted children, so he instantly created our existence, right? Uh, why did he make only two? What was the purpose of creating just two at the beginning? Um, God didn't create two. Okay. What God did was created billions and billions of souls that existed in the soul dimensional space, if you like ready to incarnate onto a planet of which there are many and then what God did was create two bodies mm -hmm. for the first couple to incarnate into and then allow the process of their desires to create the rest does that make sense? Hmm. so God didn't create two souls God created billions and billions and billions of souls you're thinking Physically, so you're yes. thinking about the bodies that God created that were the receptacles of the soul, that the soul would be received into, if you like, in the first incarnation. And God created a process by which we could then create the bodies of the next souls that we're re Does that make sense? So, so as we get together as a couple, we are actually creating, sexually, we create a receptacle that another half soul can connect to. Now God created that process as well in that in that creation. Yeah. You Sorry, to talk. Right? I was just going to say that that's a really beautiful way that God did that, mm -hmm. because it gives all of us the opportunity to understand God's feelings just a bit more. And maybe we need to talk about that in the getting to know God mm -hmm. thing. But yep. um, the desire for union and the desire to create something to give love to is exactly the process that God went through to create these souls, creating little souls in order to share <coughs> her love with. And then as we become parents, we get to experience that. And that the, the act of creation in order to, in its pure sense, to give love to, to, to another being. And so God is actually teaching us about his love through our <coughs> entire existence. So it makes sense to me that he just, Adam and Eve, if you like, were like special cases. But from then on, God's immediately teaching us about her love and how her, Did her love God works. God instantly created those uh, two physical bodies? Nobody can actually tell you how God created those two bodies. We can make a lot of suppositions. Uh, because, But the truth is they were the two first two people on this particular planet and in this particular system um, that were con consciously self-aware and because they were the first two consciously self-aware they didn't know how they came into existence mm -hmm. and so therefore we don't we can never say for certain how they came into existence the feelings that we have of course are quite different uh, about that uh, in terms of we can talk to God about how God caused the first human cup to come into existence and the feelings you get from God about that are, are actually about that God created their bodies almost like an animal um, uh, that were, was alive 
before the soul, and, and then the soul connected to those bodies as they became alive. In fact, the human body cannot sustain life without the soul being connected. So, so, so for that reason, God created the human, the, the, and this is the, the most logical answer. Um, and, but as I say, it's, it can't be given for certainty except through this discussion with God that goes on. But um, God created the bodies of the two halves of the soul. And when those bodies were ready to be given life, God incarnated the first human soul into those two halves. And at that moment, the bodies became alive and the soul, the human souls that incarnated, sustained the life of those bodies. Do we know the time? Do we know the time that it occurred? Certain, How many years before? Certainly. Yeah, that certainly is the case. We do know the time periods that occurred. I can't remember them, but we do know them. <laughs> it's a couple of a couple of hundred thousand years ago for this earth. And if they would not fell from the Eden, you know, like the, the theory of fall. Yeah. Uh, would they? Uh, you should okay if you have answered, but then they would still have children. Yep. So, uh, no, that's it. Okay, I didn't read uh, the question. Sooner or later, uh, with the variety of souls, sooner or later, some of those souls would have exercised a, a desire to live in disharmony with God at some point, um, because that's the possibility, that's the potential God created, and they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to take, choose that potential. And in fact, even after all of these events of the future occur, there will be many, many souls that still desire to not connect to God. And uh, they are still able to become perfect, natural men and women, um, six-sphere people, if you like, but they won't ever be a part of the celestial kingdom or above um, until they actually connect to God. And... Um, yeah, so that there, even in the future there will be people who made the same decision as Ammon and Amman made, and that was to separate from God. Now, Ammon and Amman have had, had another opportunity to connect to God, which came when I, when I came onto the earth in the first, in the first century. And, and so um, they did choose reconnection with God after that time. Uh, but it was some years after I passed that they began that choice. They didn't choose it while I was on earth, they chose it afterwards. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Why do you have so much fear about media? About, about media. About the media. The media. media. About... It's more simple. Can you say more? Well, I can feel from you as a group, there's this real fear about whether people know you're, you know, coming along to hear a person who calls himself Jesus speak to you, and also whether the public you know, send TV or radio or whatever along to such events. And I just wondered why you have so much fear about it. Because it's a definite collective fear that you have. Would you like to express why you have so much fear about it? Nika? Uh, part of my fear in that, in that subject is I don't want to be attacked. Right. Yeah. Because if I state every single time I stated the truth, that goes against everybody else beliefs, yeah. I get attacked upon. Yep. And I'm not one with God to feel happy about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're not happy about it, you so Right now, it is not Can you see, though, Nico, that it's also an issue with regard to how much we love truth? You see, if we really love truth, we won't be so worried about attack. And the irony is, if we really love truth, we get attacked less generally uh, than we did if we don't really love the truth and we're willing to compromise. You see, the main reason why people attack us is because they want us to compromise. Yeah. 
And once they know that we can't, we won't compromise, then often the attack just disappears. That's the irony of attack. And so a lot of times it's our fear that invites the attack in order to deal with the emotion of compromise. Many, many of us are willing to compromise truth. I, I noticed that many of you had, you've not, I've known you for three years, and yet you've only just told your families that you know me. I find that quite interesting, huh? It's the name that triggers. It's the the name that triggers them. The name that triggers them. <laughs> Not yeah. what you say. I agree. I, I and know. We have a conversation with a uh, Patra and I with a couple, and uh, we just told them just a um, sum of all the things you teach, and when we said the word, we just <laughs> yeah. We felt that everybody attacked us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they ridiculed you too. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And can you see how much and of this didn't is stay to hear even one hour yep. of what you said in order to free choose yep. to live it? Yep. So can you see that a lot of the reason why is because you're afraid of ridicule? You're afraid of what people think of you. And I notice here in uh, Athens that is a very dominant emotion where people are afraid of what other people are thinking of them quite a lot. Yes, it's right. You see it, you see it um, quite a lot uh, as a dominant emotion in your society. Um, there are some societies where uh, that I've been to that have very little fear of what others think of them um, in comparison, you know, like uh, I went to, when I went to visit Canada, Canada was quite an interesting place because I found that people could be really out there and unique and yet they weren't ostracized or condemned generally. They were I think it's fashionable in Canada. It's sort of fashionable. Probably if you were Greek Orthodox you wouldn't be so fashionable because yeah. you were like fitting in with the yeah. yeah. And I just I just find it interesting how different different cultures have different emotional injuries um, relating to how other people feel about them. And I do feel this issue of how people feel about you is a is a common cultural injury you have here in Greece. Yes. Okay. And it's something to have a look at emotionally. Yeah. Do you think it's that, you know, Marina, you were talking about the family, the attachment to the family. And I feel that families are the major construct that make us conform, aren't they? It's like the threat of family rejection that is pretty powerful for, it's been powerful in my life. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the sect of the family. Yeah. <laughs> the real cult. The real cult. Yeah. 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 So I just wondered if because Greece has a strong culture of the family, it it also then translates into how's everyone gonna feel about me, you know? Yeah. 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 There seems to be a real fear in many of you of your family yeah. knowing. Mm. And many of you on. have families who've reacted strongly, yeah, to yeah. yeah, my family, but they knew before, like, I had told them everything, and it was like, okay, she's crazy, like, all of them. And, but when they heard that you were coming, that's the one they freaked out. And, they and particularly when they heard that you wanted us to stay in yes. your house, yeah. that's when they really freaked out. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's often the case, is that it's okay for somebody to have a very abstract involvement. But when it's a real involvement, then people start really attacking it. Yeah, you see that a lot. That happens a lot in Australia too, by the way. It's not just here. Um, one reason why I bring it up, though, is that because of the fear of the family, there is also then a very strong desire to please the family. And if you have a very strong desire to please the family, you are going to subject your own will to the family's will. Mm -hmm. Now, can you see how this also impacts upon earth change events? Mm -hmm. Like, so, so if we have a discussion about earth change events and what might happen here in Greece um, about those events, and you then decide to make certain choices about those discussions, um, can you see that if you hook into your family, you're not going to feel very free to make choice? you're going to be very, still very concerned about what the family is going to think of you and what they're going to think of you making a different choice than what they're making and so forth. And so um, what I've said to people frequently is often 
many people who could survive the coming changes on the earth will not survive them. And there was only one reason why they will not survive them, and that is because of their family. And, and not because of their family, but because of their emotional hooking to the family and their emotional hooking to wanting the family's approval. Now, I put to you that, that if you want to be a part... Obviously, we can choose to pass or stay. I am not invested in either one, <laughs> in the sense that, you, you know, you're going to have a life either way. You're going to... Probably many of you are going to immensely enjoy the spirit world. You're going to be fascinated with it. And it's a, just an immensely beautiful place in me, most of the locations. Um, and so you're going to be really enjoy your life in the spirit world. But many of you, I do feel in you, a desire to be a part of changes here on earth. I feel that as a pretty strong desire you have within yourself. But your families don't have the same desire. In fact, many of your families have a desire to pass. If anything's going to be markedly different from what it currently is. So in other words, Many of your families sort of feel like, well, if I've got to have to give up meat, then I might as well die. <laughs> Many of them feel that way. If I'm going to have to give up, you know... Well, my parents told me that. They told you that, yeah. They told me that. Yeah. If I'm thinking that you're going to die. I'd rather die. Then. I went through the whole thing and I'm still alive. Yeah, exactly. I've been for a fish for a year, so... Exactly. <laughs> but they do that. Like, yeah. The, no, I, was just, I was laughing because in Lebanon, when I said I didn't eat meat, they'd be like... But how do you live? Like, yeah. How do you live? Like, like, you still eat, like, you, but you're chicken, right? Yeah, you're chicken. yeah. Like, but you, fish, you're, you're still alive. Fish. You go to the doctor much? Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But it's still, like, 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 like Greeks with the food thing, I'm sure it's like beefy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a huge injury, huge. And, and this is the thing, is that, you know, many of us are choosing to do things for the sake of pleasing our family. Firstly, that actually harm our soul, but secondly, that also are going to harm our ch free, t free will to make choices in the future. And, and unless we deal with this family issue, we're not going to feel free to make choices in the future. We're going to do what the family says to do, and if the family says, I'd rather die than eat meat, many of them are going to die rather than, eat, than not eat meat, you know, as a result of that desire that they actually have, ironically. and and. And dying, there's no problem with dying. Like, at the end of the day, you're still going to be alive and you're still going to be in the spirit world. And so that I'm not talking about any need to have any fear or anything. It's just about what do you desire for yourself? See, while you're so hooked into family and fear of family and fear of their feelings and so forth, you're not going to be free to have your own desires about what you want to do in the future. You're going to be doing things for the family's sake rather than actually feeling your own desires and acting upon that, those desires. So my feelings, what we'd like to do while we're here is to actually help you get through some of those emotions or at least begin to confront some of those emotions about why you are so afraid of public opinion and why are you so afraid of family opinion? Why are you so afraid to be different to the rest of, the, of your environment? You know what, what 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 fears are driving those those things, because we feel that if you can deal with those particular things, then you will become free to actually enjoy your own life choices, probably for the first time in your life. Actually, um, for many for many of us, um, that would be the case. Yeah, and I, I like for me, I have huge terror about public humiliation and ridicule a lot um, based on events in my first century life. Um, but I've lived my life in this addiction of approval with my family, with my friends, every, with anyone that you meet. And um, going through a national media campaign which uh, slanders you and makes you out to be a freak, it's certainly a great way <laughs> to deal with that addiction. <laughs> and I'm joking, but it's true. I feel so much more liberated to have gone humbly into that experience and it's it's like a freedom of just I can have my own desires you know what I really feared was going to happen happened and it hurt and now it's over and let's move on you know and we but, survived but uh, yeah we survived that was Which is a what genuine thing would happen. fear um, yeah. of death yeah what happens at the summit 
<laughs> yeah. Wait, we're already in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a semi This is a lead up. This is a lead up. It's a global one. The freaks out. You know how it's a summit? Do you think everyone should have like a flag from the yeah. country? Yeah. 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 We can have so much fun with this stuff. Maybe. And this is the irony too, is you can have so much fun with it all if you really wanted to, but, but many of us are in so much fear about it that we can't even think of having fun with it. Right? Craig and Farron did a really good job like when they showed like the maps, do you remember? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like Sweden. Yeah, yeah, okay. from all around the world. Yeah. Europe, yeah. 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 You were included. Yeah, because yeah. 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 you're so different from that. And she's like, you just got put into you're yeah. really in it. And the headquarters. And the headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> and the headquarters. <laughs> and the headquarters. <laughs> You'd be so impressed with our headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> our, our headquarters is a one bedroom home. Carolina's is a more established headquarters. What's your point? And then I was like, what's your point? No, it's quite amusing. It's quite amusing, but, but it's interesting how fearful we get about quite amusing things sometimes, don't you? Um, we give them power. Yeah. 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 The problem I have with the media, because you spoke about it before, yeah. specifically the Greek media, yeah. everybody can recite you the Bible, yeah. because it was written in Greek and yada, yada, yada. They know everything, yet no person, even the ones that go to church, on Sundays or Easter or Christmas and they're really fanatic about it. They do not live by that word even. Mm -hmm. even to the so the hypocrisy. Yeah. They're, they're mimics. Yeah. My it's sisters just... upstairs and my mom, they always tell me all this stuff. Oh, you like they told me you're not you're not married in the church, then you're a prostitute <laughs> and he's paying you. And like they told us He's not your husband, and like my sister lives with her boyfriends, and they change occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, she came to my house to tell us that we're not married because God hasn't blessed the union. Yet, it was okay for her to have boyfriends move in and out, you know, every couple of yeah. years. But they're really vicious. Like I, I, I see them, like Lena has said, I see them as monsters because they come in your face and like, they, they quote the Bible. Yeah. And, and, and the scripture, and like I really get fearful of that because there's so many. There's churches like like popsicle stands. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's yeah, a church yeah, yeah. like in every other corner. There's every, church, and yeah. people pay for those churches, not the church. And Kat, what I suggest to you, Katarina, is that you're going to have to love them all. Yeah. And I was going to end that saying it's really hard for me to love my mom and sisters where they quote me the Bible, and they're not even. They don't even love them. So if you were being loving with your mum and sister, what would you say to them? In words? Well, I would have told them that they're very unloving with each other or myself. Wouldn't it be better just to say the truth to them? Like, isn't it sort of, you're very unloving? Does that sort of help them? Well, I spoke actually three years ago. I took my mom and my sisters and I said, okay, I met Jesus. And uh, he came back to earth, and uh, my mom said, what do you mean? I said, well, how do you expect him to come? Because I said, he's a man from Australia. She says, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you have the expectation then for him to come in a certain way? Yeah. Would not God decide or help or assist for Jesus to come back any way he wanted to? No, no, Paul decided 2,000 years ago how I'd come back. <laughs> That's, it's in the Bible, Katarina. Yeah. No, it's the and Apostle so Paul who decided how I was going to come back. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they believe. They're expecting you as, uh, like, really differently. They don't even know how they're expecting you, just like how they're to listen. So they disregarded me from the saying, okay, yeah, you're American now, you're not even Greek anymore. I, I agree with what you're saying, but, but I can't agree with your feelings about the whole issue in the sense that you know, if you want to love, if you want to love your family, you, you one thing in love is that we, see, see what you're feeling is their attack, right? Yes. So you need to feel their attack. And I feel it more now. Yeah. Than... But the reality is, um, they have a whole set of belief systems which are very, very hard to give up. You understand? Like, they have a whole heap of belief systems which they are finding very, very difficult to give up. 
the truth is the only thing that is going to confront this for them. You stating the truth. Without you having an emotional investment in their listening to it or not. And this is where we get into a lot of trouble, is that we, we want to say the truth, but we have an emotional investment in whether people are going to listen to the truth. And as soon as we have an emotional investment, we are actually being unloving. We are actually now putting a demand upon them that they actually believe what we believe and accept what we accept. Or understand me, or even let me believe where I want and let me be. Yeah, and the reality is they don't have to let you be. They don't have to let you believe what you want. They don't have to do any of those things. And when you have dealt with your emotions about that, you will still be able to be loving to them, even though they're doing that to you. And Katarina does not want to hear this. I don't want to hear that. Right now. Yeah, I'm really fearful of even contemplating being this open and this free. <laughs> Katarina's son, uh, for those that can't see, <laughs> is interrupting Katarina's discussion on that, this matter. And the reason why is because you want the interruption. Um, so, so the reality is you are quite challenged with being loving to people who are being unloving to you. Yes. And, and this is the lesson we need to learn, is that in the end, anybody can love their friends. Anybody can. You know, there are people in jail who love their friends. There are murderers who love their friends. But to love your enemy requires a great deal of development emotionally and spiritually. But that's the place we need to be, where we are willing to love our enemies. And, <laughs> and the reality is, when you get to the point where you love your enemies, that's the point where you have total freedom to actually tell the truth as it is without an emotional investment in its outcome. Because you're not worried about how they're going to treat you if you tell the truth after that point. And I feel this is when you can be so much of service. Of course. Like it's like it's the only really, time you're of yeah. service. Yeah, when, yeah. You, when you... For me, like, I love God so much, I want to learn how to love all my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Even yeah. though I'm far away from that space. But I really feel this when you do it, you feel how much... And you can be so much guided. Yeah. It's a for me, it's the most beautiful process. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And then you really understand... For me, I really understand what it is, and I so want that. And it's, yeah, it's powerful in you. Yeah. But we have emotions as to why we can't do it. And we still do need to address those emotions. And we have belief systems as to why we can't do it. And we still need to address and release those false belief systems. The, re the reality is you can get into a state where you love your sister and your mother, even though they're Greek Orthodox and even though they're being hypocritical. But you can also say in that loving state, hey, mum, you're a bit of a hypocrite, actually, right? Because you tell me all these things you believe, but you don't practice them. So that's hypocritical. And, but you can say it without being condemning. You can just call it what it is. So in the first century, I said to the Pharisees, actually, guys, you're just like whitewashed graves, actually. You know, outside you look all nice and pretty and all washed up and everything and clean, but inside you're just full of dead men's bones. And I could say that to them, still coming from a condition of love, without feeling an emotion of judgment towards them. It's a statement of the truth. That's what they were like. And you could do that without being worried about the consequences. Does that make sense? Yeah. The problem is when we become invested in the consequence, we often then become unloving because we have unloving demands. So my suggestion over the coming couple of weeks, you'll have some opportunities to address this issue with your families. <laughs> Where are you going Tuesday and Wednesday night? Why are you going the following Saturday too? What's going on? <laughs> you know, there'll be these questions that come up and you have the ability to answer them with love, you know, with love and address the fears that you have in the process and just let it happen. And my suggestion is if you do that, It'll help you eventually be yourself. It'll help you actually have your own desires and passions. And in the future, you're going to need your own a connection with yourself first. 
you're going to need a connection where you're not willing to do what other people do because you know differently to other people like you know things that are different to what they know and and in the future that may in fact even affect whether you live on earth or not because many of you at the moment may decide to pass just for the sake of maintaining peace with your families and to me that would be a shame if your desire is to remain on the earth and be a part of the changes on earth of course there's going to be changes in the spirit world too which you can be a part of so it's really again it doesn't matter so much but it just depends on what your passion and desire is if your desire is to remain here then this hook into the family is going to be very much against you remaining here if that makes sense mm -hmm. to you if you release this hook into your families and learn how to live your life in passion and desire because you of what you believe yourself not because of what I say to you or any other reason but because of what you believe then you'll find that you'll be able to make choices and decisions that will be very very easy to make and you won't be worried about what everybody thinks about you or what it, how everybody views you or any of those kind of things and that's freedom that's what freedom is but I thought I'd just leave you with that point tonight, eh? Yeah. It must be about 7.30, yes? Yeah. You need to come yeah. on later. Yeah. So it's time for us to... I want to adapt to Greece. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. Say 7.30. Yeah.